hello friends welcome to truth of physics today in this video i will discuss a very important uh, concept uh, that is what will be the range of the j vector now what is j vector or you can say the operator in quantum mechanics now what is i am going to uh, cover in today's video i have to first uh, discuss that and that is uh, this is what the addition of angular momentum in quantum mechanics so j to j is what j denotes the angular momentum in quantum mechanics operator and uh, when uh, we uh, just add add two angular momentum operators like j1 and j2 uh, then we'll get an another angular momentum total angular momentum this is the addition of the two angular momentum j1 and j2 now what will be the range of that angular momentum that is let us understand with an example what i am going to discuss in today's video that is suppose you are given j equal to j1 equals to half and j2 equals to half suppose then what we'll uh, do in determining the uh, cliffs gordon uh, coefficients that means from here we do what uh, we do uh, basically this means for this uh, we, we do the uh, corresponding amount that means uh, minus half and plus a half sorry plus half and for this also the m twos will span from minus half uh, to plus half minus half and plus half now the addition of this two that means the j the j this this means not the simple add simplest simple, simple uh, algebraic sum that means we know that in quantum mechanics all every operators uh, can be uh, expressed as uh, matrices right now this matrix now this matrix is of order 2j1 plus 1 we know how i uh, will discuss uh, after some time and this j2 will be 2j2 plus 1 the order the uh, dimension its dimension is 2j plus 1 and its dimension is 2j2 plus 1 that means if this is a m cross m matrix this may not be an m cross m matrix this may be a n cross n matrix suppose for different values of j1 and j2 so this can these two cannot be add simply this is not a normal uh, addition of two matrices okay this is a uh, representation okay this is just a uh, representation representation of adding to uh, angular momentums in quantum mechanics okay now okay now here the addition will form the j vector total angular momentum and it will span from j1 minus j2 to j1 plus j2 that means this is the minimum of j mean you can say and this is the maximum of j that means j max now how it becomes that means when you do the calculation when you do the problems to determine the clear golden coefficients uh, then what we do then we just uh, find this thing and the uh, corresponding uh, total angular momentum or the addition of the two angular momentums which we call the total angular momentum j uh, it will span from j1 minus j2 that means from 0 it will take value from 0 and 1 these two value half minus half 0 and half plus half 1 now for this value of j so this will be the values of j for this you will get m equals to 0 and for this you will get m minus 1 0 and 1 now we will get the total thing like uh, j1 j2 um, j1 j2 and j and m like this state to be what uh this this state we will get this state by just using half half and uh, zero uh, these all things will be included right in the in this form so what i am going to discuss in today's video is uh, how this thing comes how it spans spans from j1 minus j2 to j1 plus j2 right like likewise uh, we can say that m, m takes value so what from minus j to plus j right m takes value from minus j to plus j what i am have di discussed here uh, here you can say that it 
it is for minus j1 is what minus a half to plus j that means a half likewise the total angular momentum the addition of the two angular momentum will span from the difference j1 minus j2 to the addition of the individual angular momentums now how this happens how can we mathematically prove it and understand all the um, subtle things behind these things uh, we'll discuss in this video now i will discuss each and every step uh, detailedly in this video now what i have said firstly that uh, this have the dimension of a 2j1 plus 1 now how this comes uh, you can easily understand that uh, j1 suppose for j1 has a value uh, suppose um, j suppose this j1 have some value j then what can i say that uh, what is the number of gates that we get for from this j right that will be simply 2j plus 1 number of gates we will get how because the states will be like that uh, remain that uh, when we calculate the uh, operators like this j square operator or jz operator how we we'll calculate that we have calculated that uh, like uh, here like this j comma um, in the value of m1 then j comma value of m2 and then do these things and do this this matrix right now here that will be j comma m1 and similar all the things will be placed here now this m1 is what this m1 is nothing but minus j1 this m2 is what minus j1 plus 1 similarly we will get the n term um plus j1 right or this, this is j1 okay this is j1 suppose so this j1 so what will be the total number of gates we'll get from here the total number of gates you will simply be under, simply understood that this minus j1 this minus j1 plus 1 similarly uh, like likewise this from minus j1 to plus j1 will get 2j1 plus 1 this number of terms will be there so this is just this written okay this is the dimension of j1 okay now what we do now okay let us understand another thing now right now now uh, okay suppose i write this so i will cover the all the things in in short okay but with it with without skipping any steps okay so you will understand the whole concepts clearly from this video if you have any doubt then you can also comment below in this video now just look at this state m1 and m2 this state just look at this you can say that this state is a common eigenstate for j1 square for uh, j2 uh, sorry j um yeah i can write it j1 square for j2 uh, j2 square and these things these things just copy it below right this thing is also and same eigenstate of j1 z square okay now what is j1 and j2 first i have defined that right? now let us understand let us assume that we have two particles two different particles or two different subspaces now okay now and that is and this is what the z component right now uh, j, j2 z now all these four things all these four operators all these four operators have the same eigenstate this all the four uh, operators that means i can i can say that all the four operators as this form or all, all the four operators form a complete set of commutating operators they can thus be jointly diagonalized by the same states they can be jointly diagonalized by this same state that means simply i can say that this state this state right this state is a common eigenstate of all these four operators right why we can say that only when each of these terms commute with each other now you can say you can easily understand here 
uh, sorry sorry not these terms each of uh, each of these terms will commute with each other now you can easily understand that um, wait hmm. this term upper uh, commutes with this term because we know that j square and jz commute then obviously j1 square and j1 z square will commute one set will commute right similarly we can say that j2 and j 2z will commute now these two are think these two things are very easy now is j1 will commute with j2 will that happen yes because the two particles are different or we can say that uh, they, uh, these j1 and j2 belong to two different subspaces so as the two subspaces are different so you can easily uh, make the measurement of the two states right uh, simultaneously that means uh, there is possibility of or you can say that there is a, there is a common eigenstate of these two state these two operators right because these two operators belong to two different subspaces or to different particles so this the op uh, commutation sorry this is commutation right this is zero so the commutation of j uh one sorry the commutation of j one square and j two square will also be zero likewise this this is also zero so all each and every term will commute with each other so you can say that this is a common eigenstate of this four operator so i can write j now j1 now what is this mean Given this is a just a representation which just a represent uh, like this okay now you can easily understand that as its dimension it has dimension 2 j1 plus 1 and uh, yeah, and this has dimension 2 j2 plus 1 now these have dimension what this cross this so this will be the dimension of this right this state now so this is this is this is a thing this is a step now we'll form an another thing what is that we'll discuss now we'll discuss wait hmm. we'll discuss j1 square okay now uh, we'll discuss what is this j1 plus j2 equal to j what will be the total now you can mathematically prove that if we if we make a state like this j1 j2 this j okay j1 j2 and j this j okay j and the m corresponding to this if we make a state like this then you can also mathematically prove that all the things all the operators previous operators like j1 um, j1 square operator j2 square operator j3 uh, sorry j oh, sorry now this will not be this one minute this will be mm, this j square because now it is j so j square operator and j set operator right this all three things will also be described with an common eigenstate this right this this uh, this can be a common eigenstate of all these things because these things will also commute with each other again now you are ready to begin our main topic now the space where the total angular momentum j operates is spanned by the basis j comma m okay the space okay the space where uh, the total angular momentum j operates is spanned by the basis this is known as the product space 
product space now this space is known as a product space okay now this space is just same as our previous space right like j1 j2 m1 m2 which i have discussed uh, previously this space this space why because these two spaces are just the same because we are defined like that j is equals to j1 plus j2 so this have dimension what we have discussed that these have the dimension of this that means this will also have the dimension of this that means i can write like this um, i can write like this summation j equals to j minimum to j maximum okay to j plus one which is equals to which will be just equals to our total or the dimension of this that means to j1 plus one to j2 plus one now why this becomes because uh, we have discussed uh, previously that this have a uh, dimension of this that means j comma m this uh, have this total number of eigenkets okay now we can say that uh, when we discuss that j1 comma um, suppose j1 comma m it previously we have discussed that this have dimension of 2j1 plus 1 and similarly for j2m uh, that was uh, 2j2 plus 1 this right but uh, so okay that was that was very that was clear now why i have written here a summation sign right this summation sign here there is no summation sign right when we did this there was no summation sign but here why there comes this summation sign for the total of j this is the word this is the dimension of 2j1 plus 1 is the dimension of j total j now why i use the uh, summation sign because we don't because uh, actually j is formed with j1 uh, vector plus j2 vector right so as j1 and j2 are fixed these have two definite two fixed value right what what is given in the question but j will not have a fixed value like this is suppose half and this is suppose 3 by 2 so it will not only contain a uh, half or 3 by 2 we cannot say that it will can contain the addition of these two things that means it will span from j equals to j minimum to j equals to j maximum now what you want to uh, find and why that you can easily understand with an another thing like this for z component if you write uh, jz cap is equals to j1 z cap uh, plus j2 z right now this is what the total this is the total jz now if we write the eigenvalues then this will be the total eigenvalue it will be equals to m1 plus m2 right now what will the maximum of m right the maximum of m will be the max just the maximum of this quantity the maximum of the left hand side will be just equals to maximum of the right hand side that means m max plus means m1 max plus m2 max right m2 max m1 this is so this is nothing but just j1 because m1 max is what m can take value m1 can take a highest value j1 and this will take value just j2 highest value so the m max or you can say the j max is this so this is the j max now there there will be a j minimum also right so what will be the j minimum so we have uh, this we have arrived that j max will be this now what will be the j minimum 
now to find the j minimum we have to do a thing uh, suppose okay now we want to break this if we break this then how many number of terms will be present in the left hand side the left hand side there will be this number of terms j max minus j min plus one this number of terms you can you you can use your analogy to understand this like uh, if you have a summation like uh, from minus two to two and some quantity suppose m m is equals to minus then what what will the number of and it is it is just increasing with one step then what will be that minus two plus uh, minus one um, plus zero plus one plus two that means the number of terms will be just five which is nothing but um, two that is the highest term maximum minus the minimum minus two right maximum uh, minus minimum plus one so that i have written here j max minus j min plus one maximum minus minimum plus one so this number of terms total terms will be present here j max is what j max is equals to j1 plus j2 which i have discussed just earlier right uh wait j this is j max j max so j max i can put here the uh, its value j1 plus j2 plus one minus j minimum so this total number of terms will be present when you break the left hand side summation if we do a thing if we if we uh, want to uh, break the left hand side of that summation then what we'll get uh, this will be just two this is what this is it will gradually take these values right so this will be two j uh, minimum plus one plus two j minimum plus three plus two j minimum plus five right this is this dot 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 plus two j one that is maximum value j one plus j two plus one now you can ask that how i get this series let us understand that step by step okay with an another example now your every doubt will be cleared from this simple example okay um suppose okay we know that m is equals to m takes value from 2j plus 1 right if we have a definite uh or you can say if we, if we have one value of j or one value of j suppose j equals to half suppose or suppose j equals to uh, one okay so we have one a single value of j now for that single value also there exists 2j plus one number of m values so the total number of m values for only one single number of j is this amount right this is the total okay i'm writing the total number of m values right so now our m if we vary our m or if we have different number of j or if we have several number of j's then what happens then there will be summation obvious thing if we are suppose three number of j suppose j spans from minus one to uh, one that means this is j minimum j minimum and this is j maximum what was case which is our present case right so if we have j minimum and j maximum that means j is spanning from a number to a number we have if we have three numbers suppose then what happens j will span from minus one to uh, plus one then we will take we, if we if we break this then what will be that two into j minimum plus one that means two into minus one plus one this will be for what this value will be for j equals to minus one plus for j equals to zero what will happen two into zero plus one this will be for j equal to zero plus two into one plus one this will be for j equal to plus one so what we'll get we'll get three terms right we'll get we have to get three terms like this so in the similar fashion we have uh, break this thing how let us understand clearly again okay 
then if we break this thing if 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 we break um uh, the thing which we have like j uh, minimum to j maximum right this was the thing 2j plus 1 then what happened the first term will be what 2 into j minimum plus 1 this is, this is this is very easy this will be the first term and this is for what j equal to j minimum so this is this is for j minimum value okay now the second term will be what this will gradually increase with a single single step right with plus one type of steps so the second term will be for j minimum plus one which is zero here right minus one plus zero so this is this is like you can say this is for zero term or this is with the with similar to this example this is for zero this is this is this term right this term will be here so just we have to put two into what i have put here just this value so i have put in the general term j minimum plus one plus one there will be plus one another that is for this this thing so this i have put here plus similarly for this will be 2 into uh, j minimum plus 2 this will gradually increase with single single amount right so here it was 1 this will be 2 here plus 1 similarly this will go so what will get you can easily understand that if you break this then 2 j minimum plus 2 plus 1 so plus 2 plus 1 will be just 3 that is just this 2 j minimum plus 3 and this is what 2 j minimum plus 2 2 to the power and plus 5 plus 1 is equal to just a 5 this so similarly you will get this is what this is with j maximum so you will end up just this thing this thing right okay fine now so what we have discussed here this is what if we span the expression if if, if we if we uh, if we span this expansion from minimum to maximum this is j minimum to j maximum if we now span this expansion from j maximum to j minimum then what happens then we can write we are approaching right we are approaching the conclusion of we are approaching to determine what will the value of j minimum for that we have we are doing these steps okay so we will let us understand very soon that what we are going to discuss now wait a minute okay now what will be the expansion or expression if we expand this from maximum to minimum that means that will be just to j1 plus j2 plus 1 this is the last term of this series this thing plus similarly you will get 2j1 plus j2 um this will be minus 1 right similarly we will gradually decrease down and end we will get um, 2j minimum plus 1 this thing now just do the addition of these two series step by step that means this term and this term add add this term and this term this 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 then what we will get we have uh, let us understand that so if we add these two things you can easily understand that from here 2j1 this will be 2j1 plus uh, 2j2 right 2j1 plus 2j2 uh, and plus this one and this one will be 2 so if we common the 2 that will be j1 plus j2 plus 1 right plus j minimum value if we take the 2 outside then that will be just j minimum right similarly from these you will get like this 2 j1 plus j2 plus 1 plus j minimum everything will be same just because here what is happening here this is minus 1 here this is plus 3 that means the addition will be just again 2 so this and similarly if you if you do these same things you will get the same terms every term will be just equal right this this will be the last term okay now this will be the 2s after summing now 
what we'll get 2s is equals to now how many number of these things are the same now how many numbers of terms are there in this series so previously i have discussed that the total number of terms in this series will be what the total number of terms in this series was equals to this sorry uh, yeah this or you can write this so the total number of this if we common the two then what will happen if we common two then we'll if we can write this summation as this plus j minimum into the same things are multi, same things are adding right so we can um, write this as a multiplication right so into or you can write like this and how many number of terms there the same number of terms that means this number of terms are there right so j1 this number of terms right this so j1 plus j2 plus 1 minus j minimum these things are same same right same number of terms are adding and the number of terms total number of terms is this so i can multiply one term with the total number of terms that will be the total summation okay so what we have uh, finally found these two will be cancelled out hmm? and um, okay i can write like this okay i'm just removing this now this s is what this s is the summation right the summation form is this this s is just the total this this is denoted with s so this is what this is just equal to this quantity this total quantity so if i write this in the left hand side so what we'll get uh, we'll get like this 2j1 plus 1 2j2 plus 1 right now if we uh, this thing in one side so j minimum square will be just equals to uh, if you rearrange this thing so this will be just equals to this minus this thing and if you calculate that then we will end up j1 minus j2 its whole square that means j minimum its magnitude will just equals to j1 minus j2 right so we have end up the value of we have we have got the value of j minimum so we have got the value of j minimum and previously we have found the maximum value of j j that is this right so we can conclude that when you have given the value of j1 is equals to half suppose and j2 equals to uh, suppose half then the total angular momentum j the addition of the two angular momentum j will span from or will take the values uh, from j minimum to j maximum j minimum will be what j1 minus j2 this is the minimum and the maximum was j1 plus j2 so which will turn out to be 0 and this will be 1 so this will correspond to three uh, values of m uh, this will correspond to one value of m and this will correspond to three values of m corresponding minus one zero and one so then you can uh, find the coefficients the krebs uh, gordon coefficients easily now why this this is ha this was a happening that this will span from j1 minus j2 to j1 plus j2 i think you have i think that you all have understood this properly and clearly all the concepts have uh, i think that uh, have cleared right so if you have any doubt then you can comment below and uh, take care of yourself thanks for watching